What's up guys, Justin here with TheCGEssentials.com checking out a brand new add-on for Blender today. So this add-on allows you to draw in a CAD style inside of Blender, meaning it allows you to draw lines and fill in faces more like you would in like an AutoCAD or a SketchUp. So it adds a bunch of different functions like a precision move tool, as well as the ability to add guides and construction lines and draw real lines inside of Blender. So I'm really excited to get into this one so let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this add-on is called Construction Lines. It was released last week, and it adds a number of different things that you can use for different architectural style or CAD style modeling. So for example, it gives you the ability to draw shapes like primitives, like rectangles, circles, and arcs, as well as allowing you to add guidelines and points, draw lines, and do a bunch of other things as well. So the cost for this add-on is $7, and I will link to this in the notes down below. In addition, I will also link to the Blender Artist Forum where the where the developer is actually in there answering questions and talking about the development of the add-on as well as I will link to the documentation which is going to walk you through exactly how the tool works, what the different things do, things like that. So there's plenty of information out there to help you start learning how to use this add-on. And so to start off like most add-ons what we're going to do is we're going to enable it. So you're just going to go to edit preferences and when you download this you'll need to click on the install button and go find the zip file that this came in and select that and then you're going to want to go ahead and enable the 3d view construction lines add-on um, if you're looking for a quick way to get to the documentation you can click on the button right here as well and so once this is enabled what it's going to do is it's going to add a little box right here Right, so there's a little tool on the left hand side called construction lines. And so you're going to enable this by either clicking on it or you can also enable it by typing in alt and then the accent grave key. So it's not the apostrophe, it's the little accent key that's on the left hand side of your keyboard. And so once this is activated, notice how when I look at this, I've got this little uh, I've got this little inference point on the tip of my mouse. So wherever I move my mouse, you can see how this is going to start inferencing over different things. So this is going to be the base point for whatever operation you're using. And so one thing I would recommend when you do this, and I'm going to go ahead and hit the escape key to get out of it for a second is I would recommend working for most of your 2D stuff um, in the top down view. So using the top down view like this, that way you're not drawing lines and edges and stuff off into space. Um, you know that they're going to get placed on this plane and they're going to be flat. And so when you have this tool activated, so when you do the alt accent grave, um, you can either use keyboard shortcuts in order to do different things, or you can also right click in here and it's going to give you a menu. And so when we first look at this, notice how with this tool active, there's a number of different tools that we can use. So for example, the tape is going to give us the ability to actually create a measurement with guides. Um, and so those guides are basically going to be lines that are inside of Blender without actually being real geometry. So they basically just indicate things and they're only going to show up when the tool is active. So you can also draw lines, rectangles, circles, um, and arcs as well as doing some movement stuff and some creating of faces. And so let's start by using the tape tool. So we're just going to activate the tape tool and then we're just going to click and then click again. So notice what that does is that adds in a guideline right here. So this is basically a guideline that's shown between these two different points. And you can, using the move tool inside of this, you can inference objects to it and other things like this. So basically this is almost like snapping a construction line if you've ever built anything out in the field, like a chalk line. Um, so it's a line in here that's in here and it's basically just to show you something or to inference something. And so in addition to clicking, you can also use a measurement in order to draw a specific length of a guide. And so we're just going to exit this tool real quick. And we're going to set our units. So this is going to work with any units that are in here. So for me, I use imperial inches. The length is going to drive the way that these lines are added in here. So for example, let's say I wanted to draw a construction line that was 48 inches long. What I would do is I would do the alt accent grave and then I would single click and then I would type in a value of 48 
and I would hit the enter key. And so what that's done is that's drawn a 48 inch long construction line. And so let's say that we added a wall in here and we wanted to set a line that would indicate the top of a window. Well, what we could do is we could activate this tool and we could use this in order to set a guideline. So let's say we wanted our window to be, we'll call it 24 inches above the ground. I could type in a value of 24. And then let's say we wanted the top to be four feet higher, um, or let's say three feet higher. We could draw another one that's 36 inches. And so you could use this in order to draw guides across your face like this. That way you could see exactly where this window wants to be on this face. You can see how I can use this to set different measurements inside of Blender really easily. And so another cool thing about this is this tool also has a movement function. And so what the movement function does is the movement function allows you to snap different things to different points. So let's say for example that I wanted to snap this cylinder somewhere along this guide. Well, I could right click on this and I could select the move option and then I can click to set a base point, whatever you want that to be. Then you can move your mouse over this guide. Notice how you can use this to place an object along a guide or really any other snap point that you want. So this basically gives you the ability to move things based on a base point and a target point like you see in a lot of different CAD softwares. And so this is really good for precision style movement as well. And one cool thing about this is not only that, you can also um, zoom and move around with this tool active. Right, so you can see how I can use this in order to move this anywhere inside of my model while zooming. So my, my uh, view isn't locked in while I'm using these different tools that are in here. And so in addition to being able to draw construction lines, you can also use this tool to draw real lines. So lines that are actual geometry inside of Blender. So for example, let's say I was to select the line tool by clicking on this or by tapping the L key, I can single click and I can actually draw lines inside of Blender. So this is a function that I think a lot of people have wanted for a long time and there's some kind of workarounds for it, but nothing quite like this. And one feature about this tool that I absolutely love is it tries to close in faces when you draw lines that are all coplanar that are closed. So for this shape, for example, these edges are all coplanar and it drew a face in here automatically when I close them in. But notice how I can use this in order to quickly draw lines. And those lines can also be drawn with lengths, right? So I can type in a value of like 36 inches, 4 inches, 36 inches. So I can use this to type in a value and then hit the enter key in order to create those precise measurements. And then I can use this in order to fill these objects in. So this is a really great way to start creating different kinds of polygons inside of Blender if you're trying to do that kind of modeling. So another cool thing about this add-on is it also, if you go into edit mode, it gives you the ability to split a face just by drawing a line across it. So. If I was to see how I drew a line from this vertex to this vertex, you can see how what that did is that split this face in half. So I can now edit each one of these faces individually. So this gives you the ability to do more like the CAD style or the SketchUp style drawing where you come in here and draw. And then you can extrude or work with each one of these faces individually. So simply by drawing a line across a face, you can split it into multiple different faces. And so in addition, this tool also comes with the ability to create a couple different primitives. So for example, um, let's say I have the tool active. So, and then I, if I right click, you can see how there's options for rectangles, circles, and arcs. So what those do is those allow you to draw rectangular primitive shapes like this really quickly. So you set a base point, then you can either click or let's say I wanted this to be 24 inches by 36 inches. I could just type in 24 comma 36 and hit the enter key. And that's going to draw a 24 by 36 inch rectangle. So there's also a circle tool, which you can activate by tapping the C key and then moving your mouse. Notice how the circle tool draws the circle with a certain number of segments in it. So as I move this up and down, um, you can see how this has a set number of segments. But if I tap the up 
arrow key on my keyboard, you can see how this will add segments. Or if I tap the down arrow key, this will remove segments. So what this does is this allows you to draw things like pentagons or hexagons or triangles as well. So you can use this to create really whatever kind of circles you want to inside of Blender. And the arc tool can be activated by tapping the U key. So when you activate that, you're gonna create an arc by setting two points and then kind of the bulge of the arc. And you can also adjust the number of segments in that arc as well by tapping the up or down arrow keys on your keyboard. And so one cool thing about this tool is it also gives you the ability to create a face from points. So you can see how now, right, even though theoretically it would be nice if you could draw a line across these points and have this fill in a face, it doesn't always pick up on those closed faces as well as I would like. And so because this won't fill this in, what I can do is I can activate the tool, then I can hold the control key and click on vertices in order to mark different vertices. Well, when I do that, then I can tap the F key, and what this will do is this will fill in that shape based on the vertices that I set. So let's say that you have like a couple lines over here, right? So if I was to draw a line here, and draw a line here, like this. I can hold the control key to mark these vertices. Then I can tap the F key in order to fill this in. And this will use the construction line add-ons fill function in order to fill that in. So there is a function inside of Blender that does something similar, but it only works in edit mode and only from existing vertices and edges. Um, this one, the, uh, the advertised difference is that it works in object mode and from any snap point. So I find this one to be fairly intuitive and helpful. And so if you go look at the documentation, there's some different notes in here about different kinds of snapping. So the, the cursor color, for example, shows you if you're snapping to a vertex, edge, edge center, or a face. Um, so you can also hold down the Alt key in order to templar, temporarily disable the snapping if you don't want that. So I would recommend going through and checking out the documentation. It's not super long and it's fairly helpful. Um, one other thing to note is you can also adjust the colors of the construction lines that are created. And notice how these only show up in here when the add-on is active. So only when I do the Alt um, Accent Grave button. And you can see how those then show up. And then if I close out of that, so if I hit Escape or if I exit, those don't show up. So if you want those to come back, just turn the add-on back on. Um, and then you can also adjust, and so you can also adjust the color of those guidelines in the preferences of the construction lines add-on. So you can go to the, the preferences and you can adjust that color to really whatever you want it to be. So for example, I could set this to red and then close out of this. Now, all of my construction lines are going to be red. So I am really excited about this add-on. Um, if you have any suggestions or things you'd like to see in this, you can definitely go to that forum post. I know the developer has been in there talking with different people and uh, he's currently improving this and working on the add-on as we speak. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this add-on, if you think it could be helpful. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.